So at 3.10 on Saturday, Joel Couchy entered the Westfield Shopping Centre in Bondi Junction, Australia. It was the first day of the school holidays. Thousands were in the shopping centre and CCTV showed he left briefly before returning at 3.20. He then drew a long blade knife from his pack. Over the next terrifying 25 minutes, Couchy stabbed up to 18 people as he roamed the shopping centre, chasing and lunging at some and seemingly to veer away from others. At around 3.45pm, Police Inspector Amy Scott shot him dead. But not before he'd killed six people and wounded dozens of others, sending them to hospital, including a nine-month-old baby, who, as I mentioned just before the news headlines, has been operated on and said to be doing well, but now does not have a mother. Most of those killed and injured are women. Kalchi experienced psychotic episodes, had a penchant for sharp knives and had moved to Sydney about a month ago from Queensland. Now, police say there is no evidence the attack was terrorism-related and it appeared to be linked to his mental health. Police have promised a lengthy and precise investigation into what happened. They've also confirmed that a gender-based attack was being considered as a potential motive, given the disproportionate number of women he attacked and killed. Now, while the story continues to unfold and more about Kelchi comes to light, you may think... Could something like that happen here? Well, of sorts, it kind of has. I mean, not at this level, but if you cast your mind back to September 2021, seven people were brutally attacked by a knife-wielding terrorist in Newlands Countdown supermarket. Um, and we have seen an increase, 22%, over the past two and a half years of knife attacks. Now, joining me now is Chris Carhill. He is the president of the New Zealand Police Association. Chris, lovely to talk to you again. Yeah, good afternoon. Good to see you here. It's been a while. It's been a, it's been a while, but it's great to talk to you. Now, what happened in Bondi, Chris, is an absolute tragedy, and I watched it along with most of the world probably, and they didn't think... I don't think I was alone in going, what if it happened here and what is the likelihood it could happen here? Now, I know you're not a crystal ball reader, Chris, but, I mean, what have our... Could you tell us, have our police noticed m more knife attacks or when it comes to knives? Yeah, well, look, first, I just do want to offer my um, sort of thoughts and condolences to all the, the far and friends of those uh, killed and injured. Yeah, it's, it's a real tragedy, and I've reached out to my Australian colleagues to pass on their thoughts to them as well. Uh, look, unfortunately, as you said in the introduction, it certainly could happen in New Zealand because it has happened in New Zealand. Uh, you know, we, we had a terrorist who armed himself with a knife and attacked people in that Newland supermarket, and it could have you know, been very similar results um, to this uh, if, if we weren't just lucky, because uh, mm. that it all, all it is in some cases, luck and unluck. Um, so, so we'd be naive to think it couldn't happen here. And yeah, look, we've certainly seen that increase in knife crime. It's concerning, um, 20% increase overall, but a 22% for stranger attacks. So, you know, these are the sort of things you might, um, you know, talk about that are similar to what's happened in Australia. But a lot of them are attacks in the street, robberies, things like that. So, it is certainly a concern. What if if I can just firstly look at our, uh, what our police have on for their, for their standard uniform. What what protection do they have? They wear Kevlar. Is it Kevlar? Well, no, they have what a uh, stab-proof uh, resistant body armour. So it is, uh. you know, it was, when that was brought in, it's, it sounds good, but it's actually very hard to get a lightweight um, vest that will protect you from both stabbing instruments and from firearms. So they have ballistic plates they can insert into the stab-proof body armour, but they don't wear them all the time. But yes, certainly we introduced stab-proof body armour a number of years ago simply because of the increase in the risks of knife and, and sharp instrument attacks. So they have that protection, they have pepper spray on them, and they also mostly have tasers on them. Um, so that, that, that's great. We've come a long way from when I joined and we had a little wooden bat and manga handcuffs and that was it. Um, but... Um, it's still, you know, the, the, the challenge of someone with a knife that can get to you quickly um, is a significant risk to, to, to officers. Well, that's interesting, Chris, because I want to ask you about that. You said that, you know, our police, we know that they have um, uh, pepper spray and tasers on them. And, and of course, Amy Scott, the, the police officer who shot dead this 
perpetrator. She was armed. So if there was going to be an attack in a shopping mall here to, to what happened in Sydney, how well placed are our police to defend us? Well... Uh, well, if, if they're actually already in the shopping centre doing maybe a, t- a foot patrol, something like that, they wouldn't have access to a firearm. But if they're sent to the scene, the chances are they'll have firearms in the vehicle and mm-hmm. they'll be able to get those firearms out of the vehicle. And we also have now what are known as um, tactical response teams. So in some parts of the country, in the bigger centres, you have specialist trained staff that are available to respond immediately um, they're not like on a call-out basis with the undefender squad, are they're actually deployed full-time. Um, so we do have some of those in some centres now. So we've certainly improved from where we were a few years ago. We've, we've taken some lessons out of some nasty incidents where officers have been put at risk, um, and at times, tragically, we have lost officers, such as the death of Matthew Hunt. And yes. there's been some good, good improvements done because of this. Uh, but, you know, it is so difficult when you get fronted with it so that you wouldn't expect like this one that they experienced. Chris, do you think there's a particular age group that we see that carry knives? Now, last year, I know you backed officers at tasered a 10-year-old in Rotorua who was attempting to stab an officer. Yeah, I mean, you certainly never want to have to taser a youth, but the reality is tasers are a less than lethal option. And... Without the taser, the options to deal with people with firearms are uh, with guns. Uh, sorry, with knives. You're really t- talking about a firearm. So we'd rather have the ability to taser. Tasers aren't always the option, though. It's been shown that uh, before you could taser someone, they could stab you unless you've got a decent amount of distance. That's why just a little bit of an update. There's new tasers being rolled out across New Zealand. They've been rolled out in the southern districts first. They're a much improved taser with a much um, a great accuracy from further distance. So they're accurate up to about 13 metres and wow. um, you have 10 prongs that can fire rather than two. So they're, they're going to be a real game changer, I think, for safety of officers and also though of offenders because you're going to be able to use a less than lethal option more often. I'd always be the appropriate response, but it will be more often than it is now. So I'm enthusiastic about those coming out. 